I'm sharing my audio diary with you as I feel that it's important to keep talking during this difficult and confusing time. As we enter week seven of lockdown, I'm finding it extremely difficult not being able to spend quality time with my family and my friends. I know that this won't be forever, but my underlying fear is that maybe I won't be able to see these important and special loved ones again. As my family are currently mourning over losing loved ones, as I'm sure thousands of other families are, I can't help but worry about how, how everybody is coping and if any more of my loved ones will lose to the coronavirus. It's hard looking at outside life every day and feeling trapped in my own house, thinking about all the things that we take for granted in a normal world, being able to go where I want, when I want. But as I sit here today sharing my feelings with you, I'm missing all the fun times and what was a wonderful and normal life before lockdown. For those of you with younger siblings, keep talking to them. Reassure them that everybody is doing great and we're fighting this virus together. They will just be as scared as you are, or maybe confused. The most difficult part of this virus is the not knowing and the constant struggles to keep yourself strong and fighting. As I approach my birthday, which is a big one with a crippling fear, that I will have to spend it alone. No friends, no family, no celebrations, no excitement. I remember planning my birthday with my friends back in January. We had so many things lined up, but now all of that, gone. It's just as important to think and talk about the positives, even if they're hard to find during this time. Think about how far you've come and keep in touch with your loved ones. Try where you can to include everybody in activities or just a simple video chat. Even if it's difficult for you like it is for me, stay home, stay safe, and eventually things will get better. Thank you. So I've been feeling a lot more better and positive. I've been achieving much more things that I didn't think I'll achieve to do. And I've learned a lot of lessons. I feel like this quality time in quarantine has really made me learn a loads of different life tasks and made me feel like I can actually do this. Um, I've been doing loads of online courses to help me with the future and it's just made me even more excited for the future. So I've used this opportunity to take to kind of figure out what I want to do in life. So I've taking a really positive turn and I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. I just want to thank young Devon again for being part of my journey and for helping me every step of the way. Everyone's doing an amazing job and just keep at it. Keep safe. Keep smiling. This is my audio blog of my life in quarantine. I actually work for the NHS and I've been working in hospital. I've just recently stopped working at hospital because I've displayed certain symptoms of corona. However, I'm in the firm belief that I don't have it at the moment. It's been a challenging day today. I've managed to walk, go for a nice walk around where I live. It's quite interesting actually because um, I think it's quite nice because we've all had a chance to um, go out and, and sort of see and just sort of experience things that we maybe didn't have time to. Like for instance, I've explored around where I live in Devon and um, I've gone on some nice walks so I'm keeping my distance obviously. Today I discovered a really nice sort of um, nice spot to go and sit and a nice walk and just clear my mind from things. It's it's important to um, exercise and just don't rot away I suppose with the worry at home. Just keep active, just know that it will be over and it's hard but we've all got to get through this and just do anything to distract yourself, as challenging as it is. You know, that's how I've been getting through it anyway. Thanks for listening. Prior to the COVID-19 breakout, I was living and studying away from home. Very outdoors course. I was always with animals, always with people, always outside. Never on my own for too long and never indoors for too long. Which helped me maintain my mental health after losing a good friend to suicide in September. I was able to access face-to-face help and since coming home that has obviously not been available anymore as it isn't to many people and I really didn't know how it was going to go but I can honestly say that I am so pleased with the support that people are offering and the way that people are reaching out and communities are coming together and the awareness that mental health is now getting and the services that are now having the recognition they deserve and people knowing they're not alone and people reaching out and it's so amazing to see as someone who is quite close to it it's a really positive thing to know that things may be really hectic 
but regardless of age where you come from your background people are coming together and people are putting aside the shallow idea of oh well you're young so you don't know or you're old so you don't understand that's not there anymore it's going away and it's opening doors for the communication between the generations that needs to happen that has needed to happen for so long and the idea of not being okay is becoming okay i personally get up every day knowing that i'm going to help someone and that i'm going to reach out to as many people that i know are vulnerable at the moment and support them and in my group youth council we all support each other and we're all quite vulnerable young people and that's something that we all need we all needed someone and we are that support network that's what's getting me through every day personally but also the idea that the positive changes are going to happen in lieu of all of this negativity and all of the scaremongering and all of the fear there is something really positive coming out and I just really hope that that carries on and those doors stay open afterwards. Day 37 of being in lockdown slash isolation. Hello, I'm Kian and this is my story. I've been in lockdown slash isolation since the 17th of March and at first I was always making jokes about being stuck inside about COVID-19 and I wasn't really worried about it, but as time's gone on and days have turned into weeks, I've started to get more worried about it. I'm worrying about how my family and my friends are doing because obviously I can't go out and see them just to to see if they're okay, check in on them. I'm like with my grandparents because they're in the high risk category. I'm quite worried about them as well. So hopefully, I'll see them soon. But even with all my sarcastic remarks and jokes about coronavirus and being stuck inside, I've taken it quite seriously by staying inside and going out for essential trips or going for a walk now and then. To keep myself busy, I've been cooking food and freezing it down, writing songs sleeping, going for walks now and then. But I've missed going out with, with the boys during, at the weekend during all this time stuck indoors. But I hope you guys are all staying safe. Stay safe. I'll see you on the other side. Peace. I'm a year 12 student, which means I'm in my first year of sixth form or college. And it also means that the year below me, a year 11, who would have been taking their GCSE exams this year, but of course they're not. And the year above me are year 13s who would have been taking their A-levels this year, but of course aren't. They're all still getting the qualifications, luckily for them. However, for me, this means that I am having to learn the most content-heavy part of my whole education at home. It is extremely stressful for me and the teachers trying to teach me this without trying to slow the pace whilst giving us enough time to do it all at home when it's so much harder to learn everything at home. I think everybody in my year are currently very worried because we have no clue what's going to happen next year, whether we're going to be given considerations, whether they're going to push our A-levels back. We don't know and the only thing we can do is keep working really hard under all the stress of the work and then the stress of not knowing what's going to happen next year. It's also quite hard because at this stage we would be looking into universities, we would be booking open days, we'd be going through the stages of applying to university but we can't do that and it brings an also a sense of just wishing that we could and it just makes the situation a whole lot worse when the, this most important time in our life when we would be choosing the career paths that we would want to go down, like pinnacle moments, and it's been taken away from us and added with this enormous amount of stress to get work done whilst not knowing whether the work that we're doing is going into our heads and not knowing how it's going to be put into practice because they're going to have to change our A-levels and GCSEs in some way. We don't know what they're going to do and if they do nothing, then our grades are going to be so affected badly across the whole entire 
United Kingdom and it's stress upon stress and it's just made so much harder by then the year above and below us being doing nothing and they're complaining about being bored whilst I'm there with my mental health struggling so much because of the stress of all the work and the stress of not knowing what's going to happen.